All right, what's up, everyone? It's Matt Mrozik. Day two on Spider-Man 2099, Fork and Parts 2, and today is going to be a lot of masking. So I'm going to start off with the base because it's easier than Spider-Man. Well, it's not easier. It just may not take as long. Spider-Man is going to take a while. The last one took me... It's like six or seven hours to mask the body off. So just doing the red took me a very, very long day because again, it's masking and then it's all the layers of candies and metallics and everything. So this one, I'm gonna start off with the this the field. What I call this the field. Um, <coughs> so there's a couple ways I mask. One is with a lot of little tiny pieces of tape, which is what I'm gonna do on the Spider-Man body because I have to go around all the muscles and larger pieces of tape where I can put it on the, the piece and then cut it. So I have a brand new blade in my in my Exacto. Start off with a brand new blade because you don't want it to really use too much force on the blade. And I will just do a tape test. We should be fine because this has been primed and painted and everything. So I mean, at this point, if I do a tape test and it just starts, if the paint just starts just ripping off completely, then I know I've got some contamination on there. Um, usually what would happen is it would go down to either bare resin or the factory primer. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but once in a while, I will get lifting down to the, to the bare resin, which then tells me that there was a contamination on the piece from the factory before they primed it. So in that case, a lot of times, um, I will have to actually strip the piece back down to resin and start over. Um, and it's nothing I've done. It's just that there was dirt on the piece from the factory and there's nothing you can do to prevent lifting. You can use silly putty, but again, I hate silly putty because I would never get a clean edge. And since I have all the shading, and everything, um, brush touching it wouldn't match. So that's why I don't do silly putty because I just, the touch ups are just way too much most of the time. Okay. So this is a pretty simple technique. I'm going to take a piece of tape. I'm going to put it on very loosely. I'm not going to seal it down yet and when i put it down I'm, a, I'm 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 having it stick to this part i'm not sticking it to this part not yet so let me zoom in here a little bit so i get a question i get a lot of questions about masking and again it's not necessarily hard it just takes a long ass fucking time so again so i take a piece of tape i'm sticking it right here you can see the tape will change color when it's stuck see how it's darker right there it means it's stuck so I got a toothpick here and I just I just bit the tip off. And I, I blunt the edge. I don't want a sharp edge because it'll tear the tape. Now I take this and I just start pushing it. And as I push it down, you can see the tape changes color. That means it's sticking there. And I just go and I just and I take it and I push it right into the edge of that shape. Okay. And I go over it a couple times. I want to make sure that that's sealed. Now I'm gonna mask this part off now, even though the red is gonna get some mask sprayed later. <coughs> but what I can do, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna mask this off, so this is still um, paintable, and this part down here, this bottom edge is gonna take a long time, so I have to mask off all of these little windows and these windows and stuff. So that's gonna take a while. Um, so I could cut that off now, or I could just continue around the shape. So since this is a relatively simple shape, I'm gonna continue around it. If it's a more complex shape, I tend to put a piece on and then cut it off. Now, when I get to this edge here, I, since it's not that hard, that sharp of a turn, I can continue around the corner. Now when it's like a 90 degree edge or something like that, uh, you, I do have to cut a relief cut in it so the tape will conform to that, to that corner. Um, so we'll get to a point there. Again, I just use smaller pieces. This is to me a tape. There are some other brands out there. I did buy some from, um, I think Squadron, and it works. The the Tamiya tape, it's just the it's the best I've used. It's just I've I've done washi tape before, and um, washi tape is paper tape, which is basically what Tamiya tape is. It's just washi tape. Uh, it's a Japanese paper tape. Okay, so right here. I'm gonna come around this edge. There's a really sharp corner here. Now, if I try to um, go around that corner, the tape's not gonna work in form. So I'm gonna take my blade and I'm just gonna do a little relief cut here, right at that corner. And now I can go around this corner, see? And now the tape, the tape isn't being forced to make a shape it doesn't want. The whole trick to masking is letting the tape do what the tape wants to do. Don't force it <clears throat> to take shapes it doesn't want to take. Like right here on this edge. 
I'm going to take a, I'm just make a relief cut, and now this will lay down, and I'll go around that corner. Okay. So since I got that, I'm going to take my blade, and then since I got a brand new blade, I don't have to use a lot of pressure. I'm going to go right in the edge there, and I can see the edge because I've got it sealed in there. And just go slow. And when you got all these curves, it's good to have it on a turntable. Just like that. And then we pull up. And sometimes I miss a little spot, so I go back and cut it. And that's really it. So now I usually have an optimizer on and doing this. I can see that I got a little wonky right here. So I'm gonna go back and put another piece on there, just a smaller piece, because I kind of miscut, I think. Again, because I don't have my optimizer on. When I have my optimizer on, I can get I can see closely, more closely where I'm cutting. So I'm gonna go back there and just gonna add another little piece right there. And redo it. And that should clean up that edge, just like that. Okay. So that's the process I'm gonna use for this whole entire base, putting it down, cutting around the edges until it's all masked off. So it's gonna take a while. So I'm not gonna show any more on camera because it's the same process just over and over and over again. But that's that technique. And then when we do Spider-Man, I'll show you how I just use a bunch of tiny pieces of tape to go up against the shapes and stuff. So there, there you go. And hopefully this will, I don't know, this will probably take me an hour, two hours maybe to mask this off. Okay, well that only took all morning to do, but we are looking really good. So once I'm done, once I'm done masking something like this, I, go, I always go around with my little, you know, toothpick tool or whatever. And just go around one more time and just make sure all the edges are sealed. And they're flat and that gives me one more chance to kind of look over things and make sure I didn't miss anything. and. Sometimes I miss things, you just, you know, with a lot of masking, sometimes I miss like maybe like one little spot somewhere where I missed some tape. Um, if it's small, it's not that big of a deal. I go back and touch it up at the very end, but obviously the whole point of this is to try to <laughs> cover everything so you don't miss anything. And that's why it takes so long, but sometimes I do. Um, so I'm gonna just look over this one more time. Give it a once over. And I think today I can do, uh, I'm gonna get the silver on and I'm gonna do some shading around it because I want it kind of a warm color. So I'm gonna use um, this is a Vallejo Model Air Silver on my brush. I'm just gonna go right over this color. There's no reason to prime it or anything. We really got a good base. I'm just gonna build it up slowly. Make sure you get all of the edges. Oops. Okay. Let's see if I can do the, um, I'd like to get this blue trim done, that, this blue trim done today too. We'll see, I don't know. I haven't, even start, I haven't even started masking Spider-Man yet. I'm gonna kinda get this color on and get it drying. I don't care if I get it on that little logo because that's gonna get, this will all get sleep. I'll, I'll use Silly Putty on this part. I'm gonna do that. That's one, one way, one time I'll use Silly Putty alone. Gonna get ready to do the red on the the center of the base. So I don't need to worry about having a 
weld the fine line so all that all that work is done already. And this is just the model air straight out of the straight, straight out of the bottle. And what I'm doing, I'm kind of spraying from the center out because I want to make sure I get this edge right here. So I'm making sure I get this very little inner lip. <clears throat> But I think you get the idea. We're gonna get this all base coated and then we'll come back. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm going in with that same uh, kind of dark clear black that I used uh, to shade the first color. I'm doing a little shading on this just to give us, again, some, some dimension and some interest and shape, just real light. Filling up slowly. Using my needle lock to kind of control how much paint comes out. So I'm gonna do that everywhere I want shading and I'll come back. Okay, so I'm gonna run around to the shading and then I sealed it and I decided I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna hit the center of these little spots back with the silver again, just to kind of brighten out just a little bit. Um, just concentrating the middle here. Still maintaining the shading that I did. shading so that's why I'm kind of going back and doing this and backs off quite a bit just so I create a soft transition and that's looking pretty good um, I think I'll seal that and I think that color will be done I think that's gonna look good. Here we go. Hold on. Let me come in here and do this. Okay, that's looking good. Let me do a little bit back in these areas here.
problem with these model airs that felt thinning and they don't atomize them overall. So that's conducive to what I'm doing, but it's working. That's pretty good. Just some subtle shading. It was a little heavy. I don't want it too dark. So I'm gonna go seal this again. And I think I might miss down a very light coat of a brown wash. Cause I really like a kind of a warmer tone to this. And I don't wanna um I want to seal it, and then if I don't like it, I can kind of wipe off the little areas that I, had, that I put the sealer on, so. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go seal this, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I just want to warm this up just a touch, so I got my Vallejo uh, dark brown wash on my airbrush. I'm going to back way off and just mist a little of this on. Just a touch. This will give it a little weathering. And just kind of warm up the steel a little bit, or the silver. Just a very, very small amount. This will help uh, Spider-Man pop off the base a little bit more, since his, all his colors are cool colors. Want some warm colors on the base. Yeah, that's perfect. It's real, real subtle. I'm not sure it's showing up in camera, probably not. That's all I want right there. That's it. That's perfect. All right, we'll seal this again. And then uh, technically today what I could do is I'll let this dry. For, I'll go work on masking Spider-Man for a while, let this dry really well. And I could silly putty off this bottom part and work on the red. Maybe get that done because I do want to do this little bead down here, uh, blue, the same color that's on Spider-Man. So that'll just kind of help. Maybe I'll do like a really dark metallic blue. I don't know, but I think that'd be a nice little detail down there. And it'll kind of help anchor the base again. Um, so I was like a darker color at the bottom of a base. It just helps anchor it, uh, makes it give it some weight. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go seal this again and then I'll come back and we'll start masking Spider-Man. Okay, so now for the fun part. I don't know if I'll get this him masked today because uh, I'm starting this like in the afternoon. Uh, the last one took me literally almost all day to mask. So I'm not gonna kill myself to try to get this all masked and the red done on him today, uh, but we're gonna go for it. So I have a, I bought a bunch of small little cutting mats uh, a while ago to model show and I use these just strictly for taping. So this is a long, tedious process, but this is for something like this, and I'm gonna explain why I do it this way. I have all these muscles to go around, okay? I'm not gonna use silly putty because I'm gonna use a 2K clear on this and that would not work well. It would not be a fun interaction with the, the silly putty. And I don't want to go brush touch that up around the edges. So the, what I do is I, I use a ton of tiny little pieces of tape. And the reason I use a bunch of little tape is because it conforms to all these shapes and curves much easier than big pieces of tape. Again, like I said earlier, you want to let the tape do what it wants to do. You don't want to force the tape into shapes and curves that it doesn't want to go into because what's going to happen, it creates this tension on the tape and it's going to lift off the surface, which will create uh, underpaint or bleed through. So that's why I do a bunch of small pieces. So I just got uh, tape on the side here and I cut into little pieces. Oh, well, we can see that in the background. And this is why it takes so long, but you get really good results. And I use my Optivisor, I put it on my head. <laughs> and again, I'll do a little bit of this on camera and the rest will be off because I really need to be um, really concentrating on what I'm doing. Um, okay, so basically just take the tape and you just stick it in the corner, okay? Just like that. And then seal that edge, okay? So it's not rocket science, not necessarily hard. It just takes a long fucking time. 
Okay, another way you can do it is what I did on the base. You can take the piece, the little piece of tape. You can make sure you have some excess. Stick it onto the, the body. And then push it into the crevice. Just like this. And then cut off the excess. And I go between the two techniques depending on the shape that I'm trying to get with the, the, the curve that the tape is going into. Okay. And then take that off. And you do that a thousand times around everything. And then you do the main, all the main areas. So again, if I just want to try to, I find I get a better result when I do what I just did where I put it on with a little excess, push it into the, co the corner of what I'm trying to mask off, make sure it's nice and sealed. And you'll know you'll have a good edge in there. You'll have a nice sharp line to go and cut the tape. Again, you want a sharp blade. Because what you don't want to do is have to put pressure on the blade. You'll slip and you'll cause some damage. You want to, you'll know you'll need a new blade. Like when you start to go to cut, instead of cutting the tape, it starts to tear, it starts to tear the tape or wants to pull the tape off the surface. Then your blade is dull. These blades I have are supposedly, these are, um, Exacto used to make a really good blade called X-Life Blades. Well, they don't make those anymore, unfortunately. And they used to last forever. These are labeled X-Life Blades, but they are not the same quality. So I'm not sure what Exacto did, but I can take this little piece I just cut off and use it as a piece of masking. And you can see them overlapping quite a bit. And again, I've got my Optivisor on. I'm just making sure I've got it right in the corner there. And that's the process around all these shapes in the eyes and the nose. It's just a very tedious process, but it pays off in the end. When you go to pull this off and you have a clean edge, yeah. it's, it's satisfying. So I'll do this. Um, and if I take a break to go back and work on the base a little bit, I will, but I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so it's Wednesday, day three on Spider-Man. I ended yesterday um, not quite finishing the masking on Spider-Man himself, but you can see all those little pieces of tape. <laughs> it's very tedious, but this is the best way to get a very complex shape mask. So I got it around the shoulders and on the back. So I got to mask off the arms today and then get the whole body covered. Oh, I got to do the face too. The face takes a while because we have all these little details to go around. So this morning is just to be spent. What I think I'm going to do is jump back on the base for a little bit because I can get the next color down while that's drying. I can uh, come back to Spider-Man. So let's do that. Let's jump back to the base for a little bit. So we're going to do some more masking on this guy. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mask so I can spray this bottom edge the blue that's on the base or that's on spider-man sorry so i kind of think there's a there's a quicker way i can do this let's see again just the masking takes a long time but it is a necessary evil to get the results we want so this is kind of tricky because i need to really have this in my lap so let's see if i get this in I work in my lap a lot, so. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to mask these edges here. And I didn't decide to do that edge blue until like later in the process. Normally I would probably have done that blue first and then done the next color because it's always harder to mask a raised area than it is to mask a recessed area because you have less surface area for the tape to stick to. So I'm going to go around and mask all these little areas off. I'm 
think this will take don't think this will take too crazy long. There's a little lip on the bottom side that's gonna go blue too. This little detail line goes all the way around the base. So I want to make sure I get that. I don't know if you'll see it when it's sitting down, but we want to make it consistent and look really good. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put that on. I'm going to seal it like I normally do. And then cut that excess off like I've been doing. Again, this bottom edge you probably won't see once it's sitting down, but we want to make sure we do the best job we can and that every little detail is taken care of. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to mask all these little areas off and then put it just some tape over the whole thing or some uh, saran wrap. And we'll get that blue done today. And then maybe I'll get the red down too. We'll see. Like I said, the first one took me right at 35 hours, so... I'm thinking this is probably going to take right about the same. This one does have a little more masking involved because of the base. But the other one had that little statue and stuff that took me a little while to paint because I did the bronzing technique, which is uh, several steps and several layers. So that, that painting just took a little bit longer, but there wasn't really there wasn't any masking on the base. <clears throat> so anyway, a little tedious process again for masking, but... Get this all masked off, then we'll work on doing the blue. Okay, so I got that all masked off. We're going to go spray the metallic blue. I'm not going to show that because it's the same process as I did on uh, the Spider-Man body. Uh, same colors and everything. I missed this little spot here. got to do that. I think I saw that because that would have sucked. I'd missed that. Would have been the end of the world, but I have to go back and blend the paint. Okay, so we're going to paint, paint this bottom edge here. And underneath the base just a little bit to get this lip. See, so we mask around this. This whole lip will go that same metallic blue. Get everything covered. And uh, we'll get that painted and sealed. And then uh, we'll take a look at it. All right. So we got that blue sprayed. I did some shading in the corners. And I went over with a Timmy A clear blue. I sealed it. I went ahead with the hair. I usually don't force dry stuff. But um, I went ahead and hit, hit with the hair dryer for a few minutes. And then we're going to unmask... Um, the masking I did earlier to see what we got, to see how we're looking. And so far, so good. Um, I'll let this dry. I'll work on the Spider-Man masking for a little bit. And then um, I think it'll take me at least the rest of the morning to uh, finish masking Spider-Man off. And then um, I can um, work on the metallic the red. So the red on the base, I don't think I'm going to do a metallic red. I think I'm just going to do a different red. Uh, I think the metallic blue is a nice little accent on the bottom here. But if I start doing everything exactly like the Spider-Man, then he won't separate as well. Uh, now my client asked for kind of like a smoky red. So I'm going to have to sand this smooth. It's kind of rough from all the ceiling and stuff. I'll have to do a little sanding on that to smooth it out. Uh, but we're going to do a glossy red on top, but some really nice dark shading around the edges and stuff. So again, this is kind of unmasking a slow process too. You just got to be careful that you don't nick your paint, which happens every once in a while. You got to touch it up. But if I just go slowly, um, I'm usually okay. But that blue is going to look really nice against this color and then the darker metallic we have. Um, in here, actually, I'm going to... I can actually unmask all these other spots that I, I did um, the other day because those have been dried and those are cured. I just have to leave all the, I have to leave all the masking tape on this part of the base, the top around this emblem. So let's see what happens. Let's see what this looks like. I'm going to take some of this off to kind of get a sense of what the colors look like. Again, a lot of times I just have the colors in my head and 
until you unmask it, you really don't know how everything's going to look together. But I think it's going to look sharp. So I'm going to be kind of careful here. I use my blade sometimes to get a corner of the tape up, being really careful. Again, just a slow. Then when you're pulling tape up, you want to you don't want to pull straight up. You want to kind of pull at an oblique angle, kind of like this. It just helps reduce the risk of any lifting. And since this blue tape is still kind of fresh. That's gonna look good. Let's take this little spot off here. So right there you kind of get a sense of what we're looking at with the three colors. I think it's gonna look really good. All right, so I'm gonna continue to unmask all this, and I'm gonna set it to the side for a little while, and we'll continue masking Spider-Man. All right, so we got that unmasked, and this looks really freaking good. Um, hopefully my client likes it. <laughs> so uh, the shading in the dark part is interesting. So since it's such a dark color, I did do that shading. As you turn it in the light, it kind of shows. So like right there, you can kind of see it. So as you turn it, the shading shows up because it's metallic and it's all the candies. So it really depends on how you look at it in the light, but that looks really sharp. Like I said, I gotta leave this tape on because uh, I gotta do the this emblem here. So this is gonna get a light sanding, just a really light scuffing, and then I gotta wipe it down really well and make sure that there's no dust on it. And then um, I'll do a light masking. I don't wanna get any masking tape on the blue because so I really wait, need to wait for that to dry overnight. But I can do a, a quick mask around the edge here and then do saran wrap, wrap on everything else uh, to get that ready for paint. So I'm going to send a photo of this to my client, make sure he digs this. I hope he does because that was a lot of work just getting this far. Just again, the masking, but that looks really sharp. Uh, so I'm going to continue masking Spider-Man and uh, hopefully next time I come back, we'll be spraying some red. Okay, so my ADHD brain is in full working force today because <laughs> I keep working on the base. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and get the red done on, on this logo here, or the skull, Spider-Man, whatever. So what I did is I masked this off loosely. I, this, there's no tape touching the blue paint. I just put an edge of blue tape around this. Then I wrap the whole thing in saran wrap and then I cover the saran wrap and blue painters tape simply because sometimes the blue, the saran wrap will uh, melt. <laughs> uh, if I'm using like a Krylon sealer or the 2K clear will melt the saran wrap. But I use that as a protective barrier so I can then mask on top of it without actually masking paint that may be fragile or relatively new paint like the blue I just put down uh, an hour or so ago. So I've masked this off, got saran wrap going around it, as you can see here, and then I taped it off. Uh, put a couple light coats of style over as I, I, I lightly sanded this all with a uh, ultra fine sanding sponge. Uh, where is it here? Just ultra fine sanding sponge. I just gave it a light sanding because again, as I'm sealing things and I get dry spray, it kind of creates a rough a semi rough texture and I don't want that. So I get a light sanding, wiped it down, blew it down, cleaned it off, went with my little toothbrush and cleaned out all the dust in the crevices and then wiped it down and then gave it a cu couple light close of black sino res. So one way I like to do red, this goes back to my Gundam days of doing Gundams, is start with a black base coat. And again, I have to do most of this in my lap because of the angle I have to be at. I'm gonna put this in a little towel because I don't wanna Real rough. Um, so the way I'm going to work on this, let's see if we can show this. I'll do a little bit on the camera here. Is I'm going to build up a highlight in the middle. And we're going to back pretty far off. And then maybe put a more thinner in this. This is to me a flat white. And I just build up a highlight in the middle. It's more thinner. It's a little thick. Do 
this real quick. I actually prefer to spray flat paint because it dries much faster. Gloss takes forever to dry. So I prefer to use flat because that, the, fin the final finish will de is always determined on what you top cut with, whether it's a gloss or a, a flat or a matte finish. Now, well, poop. Now I get to go back and do the black again because I just spit on everything. Let's we'll see. I don't think I'm able to hide that. I think I'm going to go back and do the black again. Because those little specks are going to show up. I can do this and I'll maybe just go back and kind of fan some black over the edges. I'm going to keep this pretty soft, backing off. But uh, my client keeps saying smoky red. So basically it's going to be like a really nice kind of heavily shaded dark red. And then um, I'll probably miss some clear black over everything just to kind of tone it down a little bit. So the trick is to just stay away from the edges really. And I backed off really far because I want a nice soft transition to the shadows. And the airbrush is sputtering a little bit. I probably need to tear it down and give it a good cleaning. Now I'll let this dry for a little bit because it will dry down. But this is how I, back when I did Gundams, I did red, I did a black base, built a real bright white highlight, and then I would put the red on top, and the shading is underneath the red. But um, I may go back and do some additional shading on this once this is part of that. So since I'm doing this a little loosey, this is going to a little quicker. Normally I'd be in pretty tight. something in the wall. I'm really just send all my airbrushes in for like maintenance, like a really good. I break them down after a few, every few projects I spend about a half a day, two a day, just cleaning my airbrushes because I'm pretty hard on them. But you can see that nice kind of shadow around the edges just by doing this. So this is this is pre-shading as opposed to post-shading. In my Gundam days, I never did any post-shading. It wasn't until I started doing figures I started doing post-shading, and they kind of get different effects. So. Um, like if I want to tone a color down overall, the post shading works really good because as you're doing the shading, it kind of the overspray tones everything down. The pre shading, this is where I'll get a nice vibrant red in the middle, and then the edges will be darker. Um, if I did it, if I was like just to put down a base coat of red and then do the shading, it would tone down overall. But I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to think I'm going to do a pre shading and then I'll go back and do some post shading. So I kind of get that muted, smoky red effect that my client keeps asking for. So I just sent him photos of the unmasked part and he's digging it, which is good. So this part, this little step right here doesn't take too long. And it's because I'm pretty loose. If I was going to be real tight, it would take longer. So I'd be more... I'd be getting around the edges a lot tighter. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. And then I'm gonna do this a couple more times to build up that really bright white highlight. And I may have to go back and touch up these edges where it spit a little bit and then do it again. So 
I'll go back and forth until I get the look I want and I'll come back. Okay, so I'm doing now is I got some Mr. Color GX Black in my brush. I went and touched up that spot where it spit a little bit and I'm actually gonna go through and kind of do all the edges with this because I like the way it looks. Never actually done this before, but we're gonna do it. So I'm just going through and just touching up the edges with this. It's real light. Spraying into the corner. So that way when I spray the red, it just fans down in there a little bit. So I want this to be pretty, pretty, pretty uh, contrasty shading on this. A little, quite a bit more than I normally do, but I'm going for a certain look on this guy. And when you do a glossy finish, you usually need to exaggerate the shading anyway because uh, the glossiness will kill some of the shading. I'm just going here carefully doing, doing this. So I should be able to get the, I'll get the red down in this gloss today. And then um, we'll pull the masking up tomorrow. Let's see how we look. And then if everything turns out, the base will be done. I think it's he's just kind of pumping up that contrast a little bit along the edges. I should use kind of a second hand to steady the airbrush. I think you get the idea. I'm gonna go around and do this on everything. And then we'll dry and then we'll spray some red on top. Okay, so we got all the shading done. This is dried for a few minutes. Now I'm gonna go start laying layering on my red. Uh oh, what happened there? Damn it. <laughs> well, I was gonna start laying on my red, but I didn't know there's a spot right there. So that must have happened when I was cleaning out my airbrush. So I gotta touch it up and come back. Okay, so I got that touched up. Now we're gonna start laying in this uh, red. The red I have is number, Mr. Color number 158, Italian red. Kind of thin down, and it's just a matter of, again, building this up in kind of thin layers. I'm just going to spray straight down. I'm not going to worry about spraying into the edge a little bit because I'll get enough overspray down there to give a little tint. So when you're doing this process, it's like doing the candy. It's real hard to get an even cover, so it takes a while. Okay, I'm actually going to the booth and do the rest and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so here's the red after laying down several coats and then a couple light coats to blend it. 
I'm going to hit this whole thing with a, a coat of clear uh, black just to kind of give it a little more muted tone. And then we'll let that dry. I'm going to seal it with the Krylon and then I'll gloss coat with the 2K. I'll come back when I'm ready for that. Okay, so I finally got this all masked off. Man, that just takes forever. Just when I think it's, oh, I got finished masking this hand off, not done. <laughs> just when I think it's, oh, I'll get this done in the next hour or so, three hours later, four hours later, I'm still working on it. Um, just masking around the face and stuff. It just takes very tedious, little tiny pieces of tape to get in all the little details. Let me mask this hand off real quick. Constantly looking over everything, trying to make sure I got everything. And the last one I did, I did miss one little spot on, on the collarbone. Just when you think you have it all, you might miss one light, little tiny bit. And the fact that I'm using some blue tape on blue paint isn't doesn't make life any easier because uh, using the yellow to me a tape on top of the blue tape makes it easier to see where I've missed a spot. So again, with the blue tape, I just wanted a bunch of small pieces and kind of fill in everywhere. Um, I think I see that little spot right there. That can be covered up. Just double checking, triple checking, quadruple checking everything. Because I don't want to deal with touching up the blue paint. I mean, I can, I had to on the last one, but ideally I don't, I don't want to. Because again, I've got, it's not just one color. It's multiple layers of candies and shading and all that stuff. So touching it up is actually quite difficult um, to get it to blend and match. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just go through, I'm gonna get my optivisor on one more time. I'm gonna go around and check all my edges, make sure that they look good, and use my little toothpick sealing tool and just go around the edges, make sure those are sealed. And I'll give me one more microscopic look at everything to see if we're covered. And then I'll come back and I'm gonna put on a base coat. After that, I'll put a base coat of number 104 gun chrome. And this will just give me a metallic base for the red because I don't wanna try to do it right over the blue because it'll turn uh, green. Uh, red does not hide well, so I need either uh, um, a silver base or just a gray, primer gray base. So I'm going to do a silver base like I did on the last one, and that'll give me a good base coat for the metallic red. So I'll come back when I'm ready for that. Alrighty, so I got the gun chrome on, I got that on the body, and then I got it also on those little uh, fins that go on his arms. Let this dry for a little while. And then um, I'm going to go in and do my metallic red, which is going to be Mr. Mr. Color GX Metallic Red. It's going to be the same process as on the blue. I hope I have enough of this. Let's see what I have here. Get that. Let's see. I should have enough. I think I do. Yeah. It's getting close. So anyway, it's GX Metallic Red. Several layers of that. And I'll show you that in the spray booth here in a little bit once this dries for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. Alrighty, in the booth again, I'm gonna do a little bit on camera and the rest off again, because I gotta turn my fan on, it's crazy loud. But uh, I got Mr. Color uh, GX Metal Red in there, number 202. And uh, I'm gonna put my mask on here, even though the fan's on, I'll show you just the same, same process as the metallic blue, just light colors and light coats and build it up. When I'm doing something like this, I really concentrate on turning him, turning him, and getting in all the crevices and stuff because it's a lot of tight corners.
So you get the idea, just going around, building up the tone. All right, so I put the metallic red on. Looks pretty good. Um, so uh, next color is Mr. or to me a clear red, number 27. I'm gonna put this on in several coats to get a little more uh, saturation in the red. And then once that's done, I'll let that dry for a while and then I'll be ready for the 2K clear. So I'll do a little bit of this on camera. There's the mask. I'm not sure if it's kind of foggy in here because I don't have a fan on, but quite a difference from that and the rest of the body. So we're going to do that on everything, a couple coats. We'll let it cure and then uh, 2K, 2K gloss. All right, next up is to get some uh, 2K gloss on the base and the red on Spider-Man. So this is the gloss I use as an advantage. This is like their, they consider their fast, um, they're fast clear. Actually, it's not the clear, it's the, the hardener that makes it fast. So um, it's a four to one mix ratio. So four parts clear to one part of the hardener or activator, I guess. Put it on, let it flash off for about 10 minutes, put another coat on, let it dry. So um, not that hard to mix up. It is super sticky. And uh, so I don't need a ton of this. Um, and I've shown mixing this before, so. It's good to have these cups either to get these from the automotive paint store but they have mixing ratios on them so you got three to one to one to one four to one to one to one you got drams fluid ounces all that stuff milliliters so i think uh i could use the uh this mixing ratio if i was going to use this versus the four to one i'd put the clear coat up to the uh one here and then the activator up to this one that'd be a four to one ratio i don't need that much so i'm just going to use um uh, the pets to do this. So just waste less clear. So now this stuff is kind of expensive for the gallon kit. It's about a hundred dollars. Uh, but even if like I do, even if I use half of it, um, it's cheaper than doing what I do with, um, than using, um, hobby clears. And this is a much more durable and it's a higher gloss. So I'm going to do 12, 12 mils of uh, the clear. So it's three, six. I'm looking at the my pipette going up to the three mils, fifteen, eighteen. Twenty-four. So there's twenty-four. And I do not want to use the same pipette that you use in this in the activator. Is, no, 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 no. Don't cross contaminate. You will hurt yourself. You will, you will either cause the clear to start activating or the activator to start activating. So do not cross contaminate. So make sure you, if you're going to use it for pets, make sure you use it one for each of the different um, components. The one thing I don't like about this because I hate these spouts. Um, the can of activator I had this guy this part got so bad I had to transfer it to a um, a metal can because. It actually broke like the plastic sprout broke. So it's not really use pipettes because pouring out of this can is a nightmare. It's just messy. So, so I need six mils of this. Yeah. 
six, and this doesn't have to be exact, exact, exact. Um, you want to you want to be pretty close. You need to make sure that that is. Well, come on. No, let me put that to the side before I spill it. Make sure that this is mixed up really well. You don't want to mix this in your airbrush, you want to mix it in a mixing cup. I'm using my Iwata HPTH. This you absolutely want to use in a booth and wear a mask. It is nasty, nasty stuff. It's very heavy, so it hangs in the air. So I'm gonna do the base on camera. And I'll do Spider-Man off camera. Just mixed up really, 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 really well. Okay. So again, I've been using for yep, my compressor just turned off. I'll make sure it's cleaned out. Well. So I'll be in the booth next and get this uh, set up in the booth. Okie dokie, in the booth. Uh, hold on, get my respirator. What do I do with it? Okay, so I have to spray this with a fan on. I can't do it with the fan on at all because it'll just hang in there. Super, super heavy, high solid stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a tap coat, which is relatively, it's not wet, it's not dry but it's just going to kind of get some gloss on there and then we're going to let that flash off it's called flashing or letting it dry for about uh 10 minutes and then we'll put a second coat on wetter to slick it out so the first one's going to be a tack coat And that's it for that coat. We let this sit for five to 10 minutes on this particular activator. And we'll come back and put a wet coat on. All right, so it's been 10 minutes and now we're gonna put on a wet coat. And we're gonna get my fan on so it's gonna be loud. dry and take a look at it see how it settles out it's got some orange peel in it but that's because all the layers below are kind of dry but we'll see how it settles out um, I may do a third coat but we'll let that dry for 10 minutes all right day four uh, after I sprayed the uh, 2k clear and everything yesterday it's cured now for about let's see I sprayed it in the afternoon around 5 4 35 so you really wanted to let this cure um, 12 to 20 hours, 12 to 24 hours before you start unmasking. 
And now, unmasking does take a while because you have to do this carefully. Um, again, someone was trolling me on Facebook on how long it took me to unmask something. Like, you just gotta go slow. Um, you don't want to start tearing tape off because if you do that, you have a good chance of messing up your paint. So I try to go in reverse of what I how I masked it. So I'm gonna take off the saran. I'm not gonna do this all on camera because again, it's gonna take me a while because I got all those little tiny pieces of tape. And sometimes I actually have to go around and kind of cut around the edge of the tape uh, just to be safe as far as um, the paint lifting. And it, it, as long as you're careful, until this clear coat is 100% cured, and it continues to cure for about 30 days. So an automotive clear coat continues to harden for about a month. Um, so when it feels like it's like you go, it feels cured, but it continues to cure for about 30 days. Um, but you have certain work, certain points in the curing process of workability. So let's say this was on a car and I was like wanting to wet sand and buff it out. Well, you don't want to wait till it's 100% hard because then it's really hard to wet sand and really hard to buff. So you want to be able to do that at a certain point in the curing process, typically after about, mm, Overnight drying, if you're going to let it air dry overnight, like I said, 12 to 24 hours. Um, if you are if you have an oven, you can force dry the clear, the clear coat to a certain point. I don't have a, a way to force dry. Uh, basically, you want to bake it like at 140 degrees for about an hour. I've never tried baking clear coat on a resin piece because I don't know at what point resin would get soft or start to deform. I don't know what temperature that is and I'd never wanted to risk it. Um, I was actually asking my wife the other day, like, well, how low does the oven go? <laughs> if I put it on warm, <laughs> what's that temperature? But she suggested maybe just having the light on in the oven and see what temperature that gets, just to kind of help maybe uh, force dry some of this a little bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna go real slow, I'm taking this off. And sometimes I use my blade to kind of cut the tape away. What you don't want to do is like when you're masking the tape, you don't want to just start ripping this off. You want to take your time. And I've got several layers on here. So again, I just, I just go real, I just take my, I don't want to mess up the hours and hours and hours of spraying paint um, so yeah so this blue painters tape is pretty good for marking marking uh, marking masking large areas it's got just enough tack that it's gonna stick kind of pretty much stay in place it's not as uh, malleable or easy to conform to um, curved surfaces so that's why I don't use it for um, all the detail painting, it is a much cheaper masking tape, but it doesn't bend, it doesn't conform, it doesn't, um, you can't stretch it. So it's not good for that, that kind of masking, all that detail masking, but it is good for covering large areas. And like I said uh, earlier, when I'm using saran wrap to cover large areas, I'll do that as an initial cover, and then I'll kind of go over those areas a little bit with tape too. So I may be, I, I, I may over go overboard with my masking, but um, you know, I do get lifting every once in a while. I do get mistakes. I miss areas, but those those lifting areas and mistakes are pretty pretty you know few and far between. So. Um, again, it's just taking the time. So I'm going to work on taking this tape off, off camera. Cause it's going to take, the last one took me a couple hours to unmask cause I go through and I basically take all those little pieces, individual pieces of tape off individually. And I just go real, real slow. And when you're pulling tape off, like I mentioned earlier, you don't want to pull straight up. You want to kind of pull at a, an oblique angle to your surface. Um, it just creates less tension. Cause again, like I said, this, even though this clear coat is technically cured, it's not fully cured. So you want to make sure you're not um, putting stress on it. So I'm going to my, my tweezers and just go slow. It's when I get to the edges that I go. That I really, really take my time. 
and I really slow down, taking tape off. These larger areas, I can be a little quicker about it. And that part goes relatively quick. So today is gonna be unmasking. I have like on the base, there's like one or two spots. I'll probably, there's, like a, there's a piece of dirt. I'm gonna try to wet sand and buff out. Um, I have enough clear on there, I should be able to do it. I put uh, one tack coat and then I put three medium coats on it. Um, so there should be enough material on there to wet sand and buff that piece of trash out. <clears throat> My paint jobs are never 100% clean. It's just, I don't have, you know, I'm not like in a commercial spray booth with, you know, a down drive booth with, and I, you know, so there's, there's always dust in my work. <laughs> That's the nice thing about a flat finish is that it hides all the dust. When you start doing gloss coats like this, any little bit of dust is going to show up. So, um, you have to look real hard. It's there, but it's not distracting. So I, you know, I used to stress out or like, I, I would spend hours and hours like repainting stuff and sanding and repainting. Just, I finally came to the realization, like, look, <laughs> You just don't have the right environment to um, get a 100% clean paint job. We do the best we can. And uh, I've never had once, I've never had a client say, oh, there's a piece of dust in my paint. Not one time in doing commission work for that going on now. 16 years. My first commission, I think it was 2000. No, my first commercial commission was 2009, I believe it was. Was it 2011? I don't know, 2009, I think it was. It was a Gundam. My very first commission. So, anyway, you get the idea. Just go slow. Um, be cognizant of your edges. And you can see I use a bunch of small pieces of the blue tape to conform all the curves and stuff. To get around the arms and stuff. So again, it's just going in here and being real careful. So I'm not going to bore you with this because it's going to take a while, but you get the idea. Just go slow and take the tape off. All right, so I've been unmasking for a while and so far we're looking really good. Uh, super clean tape line. I've got one little spot so far I've seen where I missed a little spot, a little bit on his finger right here. Uh, so I'll just airbrush some blue on top of that and it should be fine. But so far we're looking really sharp. Um, a really clean masking job. Again, all that time spent masking is worth it. So take your time masking. I can never stress that enough. Um, so I was get why is your work so clean? This is why. Because I spend a shitload of time being super careful to mask everything and just taking my time to unmask it. But really clean tape line. Uh, this is actually a little bit cleaner than the last one I did. So, um, yeah, looking really sharp. All righty, it took a while, but we got them unmasked and it looks really good. The only spot I've got to touch up is there on the finger. So, um, really nice job. Pat myself on the back, <laughs> it looks really sharp. So, uh, really happy with how this turned out. I'll touch that up later. Again, I'm not gonna show that, it's just gonna airbrush a little bit of blue paint on top of that and blend it in. Um, I might be able to, let's, well, before I do that, let's see. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can take a blunt toothpick and see if it scrapes off. I may get lucky. Ah, and it did. So what happened is that there was like probably a hole in that ball of tape, and it just got a little dry overspray on the finger, and it really didn't adhere to this finger. So I'm going to see if I can get this all off. There's just a tiny bit there. If I happen to go through the, to the blue paint, there's no big deal because I planned on airbrushing it anyway but I'm just using this toothpick and kind of using like a scrub brush to see if I get that off there's a tiny bit there so I probably have to end up airbrushing it but that's why we seal our stuff between steps so you can go back and erase to a certain point but this part is done uh, I have the fins in the booth um, I still have to paint the web cape um, so I'll do that with some pearls and stuff and I've got to uh, wet sand the little spot on the base and unmask that. So um, let's take a look at the base. Alrighty, so here's the base gloss coated. Um, let's see, I want to make sure it's actually cured all the way. It's like one speck of dirt there that I, I don't know. Sometimes I don't want to try to sand stuff because I'm afraid I'll screw it up. Overall, it looks really good. 
but there's that one little speck there that I, I just may leave it. I don't want to risk sanding through, but overall it looks really good. So you can see it there in the light, but I think it's going to be fine. Um, I don't know, contemplating whether it's worth risking. It's just that one that's bugging me. There's a few other little pieces of dust in here, but that, that one's kind of big. So let's see. Let's take some. Uh, I'm going to leave a mask while I do this so I don't get. Um, so I got these. I can go aggressive right away, like a 2000 grit, but I'm not going to. I'm going to start with like. Um, uh, what I got here? 3,800. 6,000. 3,200. I'm sticking my fingernail in to see if it leaves a mark. And with it being so glossy, it actually <laughs> attracts the dust because uh, the static. You know, I think I'm just gonna leave it. I, I think it's, it's just kind of part of the deal. Okay, well, here's the base. I think it looks really good overall. There's a few little specks of dust in there, but I'm not gonna really worry about because I don't wanna risk going through the paint. Um, so. Take a look at this. So I'll probably do uh, today's Thursday. I still have to do the um, the web cape. And I'm gonna do that probably in like a white pearl, a white and blue pearlescent. So again, I'm gonna unmask this off camera because it's gonna take a while. I gotta go through and take all those little small pieces of tape off around the, all the details. But um, I sent photos of this to my client yesterday and he liked this, a, a muted kind of smoky red. So it's not just blatant, like super bright red. It was really bright until I layered on a few uh, coats of the clear black, which just kind of muted it. It looks really good. So I'm gonna get this unmasked and then uh, we'll take a look at it. Okay, so a little tip when unmasking something like this. So there's a lot of clear coat on this clear part and it's actually relatively thick. So what I'm actually doing, I'm actually going through and I'm scoring between the tape and the clear coat because there's so much material there. It just helps prevent any lifting. And we get a nice pull away. So I'm gonna go ahead and just carefully do this around the edges. Again, the only reason is because I've got so much clear on here. more than I normally would, but I had a relatively rough surface to try to smooth out. And I'm, I'm not putting any pressure, I'm just barely just letting the blade do the work, kind of like when I'm cutting tape. Being real careful, I'm going slow. All right, after several hours of unmasking and all that fun stuff, we have all this tape <laughs> that we use to mask them. 
Got it unmasked and on the base, and I think this is looking pretty badass. Um, yeah, the gloss on the on the bottom looks really good. It's a nice contrast to everything else. Um, so I got to do the cape and a white pearlescent. And I got some touch-ups here and there. So that's going to be the rest of the day is getting that all squared away. I should have this wrapped up today. So a little, it'll be over 35 hours. It's four full days. So I'm closer to 40 on this one just because of all the extra masking compared to the first one. But he looks really sharp. Uh, I do see a little... Something on top of the head here, I'm gonna to touch up a little bit. Nothing too major, um, but he's looking really sharp. Uh, I think my client's gonna dig him. See a little specks of dust here and there. Half the challenge is dust. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'm, I'm able to put him on the base, even though this clear coat is still on, a little on the soft side, just with the hair soft, because I got so much on there. Uh, he doesn't actually stand on top of it, so. We're okay as far as putting them on the base. I got one little spot here. I got to kind of touch up on the base here on the the skull. So I got to buff out right there. But yeah, looking really sharp. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to clean up a little bit and I'll go over painting the, uh, the web cape and um, just doing touch-ups and stuff, and then we'll have them wrapped up this afternoon. Okay, so another thing I'm doing on the base is I'm going in with a, um, what is this, a 0 .01, a 0 .1 Indian ink pen, and this uh, panel lining around this skull, which is gonna kinda help give it a little more kind of illustration look. And it just cleans up any edges that might be a little not quite perfect. It's a nice little finishing touch. And it's relatively easy to do. And I'm marking it on the this the metallic color, the flat color, because if anything on the gloss, it'll just wipe off. So it's gotta be on a flat surface and it's gotta dry for a little while for it to to stay on. But it'll soak into that. Uh, flat top coat that we used to seal everything with and then it should be permanent after a little while so pretty easy to do gives it a nice little finishing touch uh, I might go let's see do I want to do it down here on this line yeah let's do it down here too I'm not going to do it on everything. I'm just going to do it kind of on a few spots to kind of help. It looks good in some blue. That's another nice little touch of interest and detail. I mean, if I I could go through and do all of these lines around everything, but I think that'd be a little overkill. I'm just going to define the blue. And again, I don't need to seal this. After it dries, I'll be fine. But I can wipe, I can wipe it off while it's still wet if I screw up. You can see it's pretty easy to do. Nothing difficult about it. So we'll do that and I'll finish up the base. Okay, so now for the clear uh, web cape. So you'd think this would be easy to do. You could just paint it. Well, you can't because the factories like to put a clear coat on their clear resin. And unfortunately, whatever they use, it never sticks. It flakes off. So like, um, I can sit here, I can scrape it off. So I got to strip the sucker. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use acetone, which is a nasty, nasty, nasty stuff to use but it's the quickest way to do it and it'll, and it'll clean the part really really well so i'm not sure why whatever they use at the factory doesn't stick to clear parts but it just doesn't i don't know what they do so uh this stuff stinks it's gonna melt my gloves it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna do all sorts of fun stuff but i just take a toothbrush and i basically get it on there and i start scrubbing and once it's kind of, once um, this is all 
stripped, then I can start painting. So yeah, you gotta strip. If they've got a clear coat on the clear parts, and they, I know why they do, they do it so the parts look crystal clear because after the casting process, clear resin isn't crystal clear, it's, it's cloudy. And that's just the nature of the material. So they clear it to make it look really nice and shiny and clear, crystal clear, but whatever they use, it doesn't stay on, it, it, it flakes off. I had to do this on the pyro. Um, so anytime I get something with clear resin, um, I typically will strip it um, down to bare resin. You just gotta do it. So it's kind of an unfortunate step, but you gotta do it. Otherwise your paint will flake off. <laughs> so you may think it sticks, but eventually I think it will flake off. So better safe to be sorry. And um, so I'm gonna do this. It, this is just take a few minutes, but this will melt my gloves. I'll go through several gloves. I don't have any chemical proof gloves, but I need to get some. So we gotta strip this. We'll get it down to bare resin. And you'll pr pretty much know it's bare resin when you don't see any indiscrepancies in the surface. And it should be a little bit on the cloudy side. So, um, and we want cloudy because we want a, a, a kind of a rough surface for the paint to stick to. Um, if it's perfectly smooth and clear, then there's nothing for the paint to stick to. You need a, you know, that's what kind of primer does. It gives you a, um, a surface that will paint will adhere to. Now I can use what I can use for a primer on this as I can use my Krylon flat. So once I'm done stripping this and I wash it and I make sure it's as clean as I can get it, I will uh, spray a couple layers of Krylon flat on top of it and they'll go cloudy, which is fine. And that, this really doesn't have to be crystal clear. It's gonna be a, like a pearlescent white. I want it to look translucent, but I don't necessarily want it to look crystal clear because if you look at uh, other paint ups in the comics, it's it doesn't it's not crystal clear. It's it just has some translucency to it. So I spend the next few minutes doing this. Um, hopefully, I don't pass out from the fumes, and then uh, we'll do the next step. I do want to mention you do have to be careful with acetone and resin because since acetone is such a caustic and harsh chemical, if you leave it in the acetone for too long, it can soften and melt resin. So that's one reason I don't like submerge pieces in acetone and leave it there. Um, it will, it, you can melt it, so you gotta be careful. Um, I learned the hard way a long time ago, back in my Gundam days, I was painting a kit, a resin kit, and the paint was just not sticking. Something was going on, and I, and I, I put the parts in some lacquer thinner, and like left for the day and they came back and the parts had turned into rubber. It soaked up all the lacquer thinner and I ruined a $300 kit because I didn't know that resin is porous and it soaks things up. Um, I'm not sure how porous clear resin is, but I do know traditional you know, opaque resin, it's porous, it soaks up things. So you gotta be careful that you just don't let, let it sit in there. So just a warning when you're using acetone or lacquer thinner on resin, don't soak the parts. Okay, so I'm back in the booth. So I stripped that. It took a couple rounds of stripping and cleaning to get the way I wanted. I put on a nice wet coat of the Krylon Clear Flat. I let that dry for about 15 minutes. And now we have a perfect surface for painting. So this is actually kind of the finish I want, this frosted look. But So what I have in my airbrush right now, uh, hold on, I'll get you the bottle. I have to bring the jar in to show you. Uh, it's Mr. Color, uh, it's GX110, Mr. Clear Color, uh, Clear Silver. So this will have like a pearlescent look to it. Put a few coats on and see how this looks.
Okay, well, that actually didn't do what I thought it would do. <laughs> uh, it looks a lot more opaque in the jar than it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for a minute. And I've got a, um, actually have a, uh, a white pearl that I think will get me where I wanna go. So I'll let this dry for a minute and I'm gonna mix up some of that and I'll come back. Okay, so I'm gonna try this. This is number 151 white pearl. Because I don't want it crystal clear, I want like a no translucent white pearlish look. Okay, so that's getting closer, but I think what I need to do is I actually need, I think I actually need to mix in a little bit of just regular white paint into this to get what I want. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go mix a little bit of white paint into this. One second. Again, I don't want I don't want this to look crystal clear because it's not what it's supposed to look like. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of. Mr. Color GX White into this. Add a little opacity and brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so now I just mix some white into there. Let's see what that's gonna do.
was the trigger. I got exactly what I wanted. So a nice translucent pearlescent white. That worked out perfectly. So now what I can do is I can go back over with some more of this just straight pearl white. I'm gonna add a little pearlescent blue, one second. So I'm gonna mix in a little of the, uh, this is um, Blue Pearl, this is uh, by Pearl X. So I'm just gonna take a toothpick and put some of this right in my airbrush with this. Right into the white pearl. And this way when you kind of turn it white, it'll have a little bit of a blue iridescent look to it. And I got this kind of bluish pearl in there. So it looks really good. So, <clears throat> so it's got a little bit of pearlescent, broke blue pearlescent in there. So as you turn this in the light, it reflects that refracts that blue pearl. It doesn't look blue, but as you turn it, it kind of refracts it a little bit. So that's the color I want right there. Um, I'm not going to do any shading on this because the pearlescent will kind of just naturally shade it as you move it around the light. Uh, I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. And then I need to see if I have any, uh, I'd like to do a semi-gloss on this, not a gloss. Actually, I, may, I just may leave it this finish. This is actually the exact finish that I want. So I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and I'm gonna see how durable it is. And if it's durable enough, I'm just gonna leave it alone. All right, back to the base for a minute. So I sent photos to my client and he liked it overall because <clears throat> he had one request was to knock down the blue a little bit more. <clears throat> he thinks it's a little too bright. So I'm just gonna go with my Vallejo black model air, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> Vallejo uh, wash black in my airbrush. I'm just gonna accentuate just shading a little bit more and just do maybe a very light misting over just to knock it down a hair, kind of like what I did on the red. So. Just kind of getting overall and then kind of really concentrate the corners again. And I shouldn't have to seal this, so I'll just, it should just be able to stay. So I'm not sure if you can tell the difference between what I just did and this one over here. I'm gonna do this a few times. So again, this wash goes on dark and the dry, it actually dries lighter. It's kind of the exact opposite of what most paints do. But to do it slowly, because 
I don't have to go back and redo the blue. And if I get a little some a little bit in that silver part, it's okay. Just killing it just a little bit. I like it. I personally like it this way, but uh, he wants to knock it down a little bit, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. He's paying the bill. Again, just do it slowly. Doesn't take long to do this. It's a pretty quick little adjustment. I do want to concentrate on the corners a little bit more so I do get some shape to that part. So the cape's drying. I'm gonna let that dry for 15, 20 minutes. And then I think if it's if that surface is durable enough, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I got a lot of questions on how I did the blue on this guy. All right, so that looks pretty good. Yeah, I just knocked it down just a little bit. Just a hair more. I just don't want the color so vibrant. Get the corners a again real quick. I did like the shading I had going on, I just want to kill it. You know, these washes, it usually takes a couple of rounds because you put it on and as it dries, it lightens up. So you wanna, you get it to where you think you want it and then when it dries, it's oh, lightened up. Typically paint dries down, dries darker. These washes do the exact opposite. Okay, that does actually look pretty good. Spider-Man will just pop a little bit more. Now I've got this kind of toned down a little bit. His blue will pop more. See him spraying into the corner so I get the shading. All right, and there we go. So we do that adjustment, and uh, it looks good. Okie dokie. So I think this might be done. Uh, I see sent some photos to my client. Let's see what he says, but I think the cape looks really good. So I turn to here, you get a little hints of blue in there, um, and the white. So it's kind of a nice mixture between the two. Looks great on Spider Man. He looks great on the base. He really pops against all the darker tones and shading and stuff on there. Um, yeah, I'm super happy with this. Um, hopefully my client likes it. But there you go. Spider-Man 2099 by Wolfpacks, sculpted by Eric Sosa. Done. Right at 40 hours for this guy. So, um, yeah, a little bit longer than the last one, simply because the base had so much more masking. But 
uh, you know, not really a, a difficult piece to do. Um, it's all in uh, the shading. The blue takes a very long time and then masking off to do the red takes a very long time. Those are the two most time consuming parts of this project. Masking the base wasn't too difficult. It's all flat surfaces. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, but not nearly as long as going in and masking all around these muscles, all these complex curves and stuff. That's what takes the longest is just going through and making sure your tape is well seated and well adhered to the, um, you know, the, what you're trying to cover up and that there's no edges lifted. So, but there you go. Stay tuned for a slideshow at the end of this. Uh, there won't be a ton of photos because it's a relatively simple piece, but there you go. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Okay, well, I thought I was done. Sent uh, some photos to my client and he wanted to do one more thing to the cape. Um, he wanted to add a little blue to the this part. So we're gonna, I'm gonna, basically he wants to have it fade from kind of a blue into the, to the um, white pearl and stuff. So no big deal. Just take a few minutes here to do that. Um, but as you can see, as I turn this, we get some nice iridescent looking to this. So in my airbrush, I've got Mr. Color Deep Clear Blue. We've got to thin down a little bit and we're just going to simply put some clear blue on this and kind of fade it in. Again, just building it up slowly. I can bring it down these shadows just a little bit. I don't want to go too far with it. I want to keep the translucency. This is a clear, so we won't ever it won't go ever go 100% opaque. Yeah, I'm kind of digging this. Good call. You know, that's some more interest to this piece. Initially, I just thought it would look good just uh, with the pearlescent, just white and blue pearlescent, but this is looking, I'm digging this. I'm digging this. Actually, I'm going to go back in with another round of um, blue pearl. I give it just a little more um, pearlescent to it. And then we'll let this dry for 15 or 20 minutes and then should be able to put it on and take pictures. You can kind of see how slowly doing it on this piece as opposed to do it on the Spider-Man body, how slowly that um, builds up you can just kind of see why it takes so long to do the shading on the body because it takes a while for this to actually start getting some opacity to it some some saturation so it's just over and over several thin layers building it up you just can't hose this on because it's a it, you gotta let it you gotta let it dry a little bit as you go because it'll just cause uh, runs or pooling So 
I typically spray in the direction that I want it to fade out into. So. Now there's some rubbing where it meets the key inside the key of the, the back and that's just the nature of everything. It's, it's gonna rub off a little bit here and there where two things rub together. Okay. That may be enough. bumped it there. I'm going to have to touch that up a little bit somehow. I'm just going to get it off with the toothpick. So if I get that off, um, again, a toothpick is like one of my favorite tools. Someone asked me, like, what's your favorite modeling tool? And I told them a toothpick. And you're like, a toothpick? And I'm like, yeah. It's like, it's a great, like, little scrub brush. It's like a little, I must have bumped this with the, the airbrushes now. And I got two, like, little spots of blue. But since the paint's cured overnight, and this is fresh, I can go in there and I can basically just buff that little spot off before it gets, before it dries too much. And it took it off. <laughs> toothpicks. I go through a ton of toothpicks. I'm just going to darken it down a little bit more here where it meets the back. It's not going to be the same color as on Spider-Man's bike because this has got that web, that kind of look of web, you know, that kind of... I don't know, almost like wet. Wet look, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. The look of wet. <laughs> Let's see. It's a pretty easy adjustment on this. You know, 10, 15 minutes of just kind of doing this. And then we go back over one more little round of Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I can put that down. I'm gonna put this back in here. And then I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of that white pearl. this on my brush so I don't get blue all over it. I don't want that. If I'm going to clean this out well enough, I'll get a blue tint on the whole thing and I really don't want that. Silver, I don't want that. Where is it? Yeah, uh, maybe in the booth for a second. Maybe yesterday. Where is it? Oh. Pearl power. And here it is. White pearl. So we're gonna take some again this white pearl. And I'm going to 
put a little of the um, Pearl X Pearl powder in there again. And when you put this Pearl powder in, it, it, it looks like it's changing the color of your clear coat pretty drastically, but it's not. I actually put a lot of pearl powder in more than you normally would. Down just a little bit, not much. Mess up what I got going on, hurry. Okay, so I'm going to take this. So I'm going to go over what I just sprayed and just kind of fan it up into the the rest of it. There's going to add a little pearl on top of what I just sprayed and a little bit more to the whole piece. Yeah, that's looking really nice. And this will dry pretty quick. I'm putting on fairly light. This will just help fade the clear into this a little bit more too. And we'll get more of that iridescent pearl look as it spins around in light or as you move around the subject. Yeah, that's looking pretty sweet. Let me hit this with a hair dryer for a second <clears throat> so I can flip it over. And so I can flip it over and still hold it in my hand without affecting anything. Because yesterday I've had this hanging in the booth. Okay, nice call. Good call for my client. Good job, Tony. Nice call on that. I like this a lot better. So we got a little bit more in here. I'm just gonna use it up <clears throat> so I don't waste it. <laughs> I can't put this clear back in my jar since it's got the blue pearl powder, so I'm going to just use it up. The pearls are a lot of fun to play with. Um, you get some really cool, subtle effects with them. All right, that's it. So we're going to let this dry again for probably 10 or 15 minutes, and then I can put it back on the body, and then we'll take a look at the finished product. Okay, take two on being done with the uh, Spider-Man 2099 from Wolfpack sculpted by Eric Sosa. Um, again, looks really great. I'm just going back to uh, what I had said before, I thought I was done. Just did the blue on the cape. That looks really nice. It blends nicely into his body and it's a good call out by my client. It does add some nice dimension and shape to that piece. So uh, yeah, it looks really nice. But uh, overall, great piece. Lots of fun to do. Uh, again, not particularly challenging. The challenging part is the masking. Um, 
Uh, but other than that, it's it's just a great sculpt. Um, a cool character. I really don't know anything about this character. I need to do some research. I should start reading comics so I know <laughs> something about these things that I'm working on. But um, I just don't read comics. Uh, but yeah, it looks great. Uh, the base turned out really, really nice. Um, everything looks great. So super happy with this. And I uh, going back to the one I did last week, I totally forgot to take photos of it with this with the web cape it does have a little cape on it. it's not nearly as big as this one it's just a little just a little one but i totally forgot to take photos of it and i'm like oh shit someone called us like i like to see photos of it with the web cape on I'm like damn it i forgot to put it on there it just magnetizes on the back like this one does but this is a lot bigger and actually has a lot more motion to it so i like this um this particular sculpt a little bit better than the last one i did pretty much the same pose it's just the arms have switched um and the uh, the low, the skull spider thing on the chest that sculpted a little bit differently, but there you go. Spider Man twenty ninety nine from Wolfpack sculpted by Eric Sosa is a wrap. I'm gonna take a photo, so stay to watch. Look at the photos after the slideshow or after this video. And uh, thanks for watching as always. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.